Anoa, are you there? Yeah, I'm here. All right. What What did you think about that? Um, I thought that was awesome. I yeah, like it, it was so different. And and here's a, the the thing that sticks out the most is is exactly. There's always a way to connect things together. That, that's I think that's my one of my number one talents is to connect stuff that don't seem like they go together. Before he came on, I was getting ready to talk about the need for the progressive army and all of us in this progressive movement that is here, whether there's a President Sanders or here, whether there's a President Trump, the progressive movement has to start on the local level. And if there's only one thing that I agreed with Bakari Sellers last night, he was he was saying that if we are really dissatisfied with it, then we have to change it from the we have to get out there and change it. Mm -hmm. And this goes to your conversation uh, about Jill Stein and the Green Party is that they're this outside force that, you know, that is perpetually on the outside. And it, uh, Michael Solomon had a nice tweet storm. If you guys know Michael Solomon on, on Twitter or the Progressive Army, go check him out. He had a nice tweet storm, really putting it into perspective about Jill Stein's campaign. Got nothing against Jill Stein whatsoever. Actually, we've invited her to come on the show and we will have that conversation. But in terms of having the infrastructure and the tenacity to get inside of the political machine, it has to come and start from the ground level at these jobs that are not glamorous, right? It, it's like the Richard, Richard, they, they may never put Richard on CNN, right? But the work that he's doing from a grassroots level, like literally grassroots level is something that has to be modeled across the country. If we're going to see the bottom line change never really comes from the top down. It always yeah. comes from the bottom up. What do you think of Oh, definitely. Oh, definitely. Um, um, we have to have a movement that is at the stronger, you know, local level, going back to Stacey's comments, going back to what we've been talking about, going back to what um, Mr. Maybe was just saying, like, I mean, we need people, we need boots on the ground, you know, developing these interests. You know, you can pass all the great policies and legislation and programs at the federal level, but if you don't have that implementation, vision and focus, you know, at the local level, if you don't have someone with the with the, the knowledge and the forethought to think, hey, let me go get these these high school students involved in this project, and then let me use the high school students, and then let me use my I'm also with the NAACP. Let me let me have them help and engage. I mean, yeah. those kids are learning so many different skills. It's like he's like working across a curriculum in, yeah. in a way that our schools don't even aren't even able to do. So so we we need to engage and support more people like that in our community. Yeah, because that is so valuable and then we also need to make sure that because with, with our elders too right we need to make sure people have their knowledge so yeah. it's not lost like there's people to carry on what they've been doing and stuff so i mean and and like, this is the, yeah. the other thing is is that i'm like i'm i'm so fascinated like one one movement that i have not done sufficient enough homework in is the environmental movement, right? Mm -hmm. You know, I am that's one area that you don't see me arguing for, except from a passion point of view, but from a, a, um, a data and knowledge and, and, and information point, I, I'm not educated enough to actually argue on it. So I'm, I'm fascinated that that he is he kind of embodies uh, that fifth um, that mm -hmm. fifth violence that Bernie Sanders was talking about against yeah. the uh, African American community, which is yeah. environmental violence, right? And, yeah. and people dismiss that. And, and it's a beautiful opportunity for a synergy to occur, like more synergy between uh, uh, people who don't look the same, mm -hmm. people who don't believe the same, people who don't have the same view of the world, but there's yeah. an intersection there for the environment. And yeah. I think it's a missed opportunity because it's something that most people, he said it, he said it so beautifully. We live in a doomsday mentality when yeah. we're basically, he basically was saying translation, Richard, I'm gonna put words in your mouth. Uh, when the shit hits the fan, then we get interested, <laughs> right? When, 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 you know, when it's the, the, the day after tomorrow type of uh, cataclysm with the environment, then everyone is going to become mm -hmm. an environmental expert. And what he's saying is that we can't keep waiting for these cataclysms and these tragedies to come for us to get involved and get educated. And, and what he's, what he's doing, is is something that I think we we should that type of model should be supported as much as we possibly can. We don't have and it doesn't take listen, it doesn't take 
grant of 150,000, 200, you know, a million dollar uh, endowment to make these programs happen. Mm -hmm. You have people out here who are volunteering their time. Yeah. Like he's volunteering his time to do this. People are willing to go out there and do the work for free. It's just, do they have the infrastructure and the support yeah. structure that they need? And that's something that we got to, that's what we're building. That's what the progressive army is going to be about. Go ahead and know, and then we'll take well, it. I, I mean, when we well, got off the air last night, like, like, um, Stacey, Stacey and I ended up having another conversation for like an hour and a half. And what he's talking about is exactly right. We're not paying attention to these issues until they're right up on us. And our families have been sick for a really long time, or we're not, understanding like why we, our kids have certain issues where we live like like people don't realize it but like in inner city communities predominantly black and latino communities asthma rates are very high for various reasons um you know th there's there's greater proximity and exposure to different types of um plants and and, and industrial uses when you talk about poor and communities of color that increase certain health risk and stuff. So, so even when we're having conversations about fracking, right? Like when we're talking about fracking, we're talking about usually like uh, 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 underdeveloped, poorer communities. I mean, you're not fracking in, in the middle of a million dollar neighborhood. Like that's just not happening. Exactly. They would shut that down. So like even, even like I always go back to my own experience in West Virginia with the water crisis that we had when the Elk River chemical spill. Like even in the midst of that, even though it was a completely different water issue, we didn't have water, but people were organizing and helping to send water up to Detroit or, or helping to fund, you know, the Detroit Water Brigade and stuff like that. So these are common issues that definitely transcend, you know, racial barriers. And when you talk about a situation like ours in West Virginia, you know, it affected people across class. However, there were certain people like Senator Joe Manchin, for example, who could afford to go to his other house outside mm -hmm. of the district. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Or, mm -hmm. or, or people lived higher up and they had older piping. It goes back to our infrastructure in the country. You know, even though it was a chemical spill, you know, the issues with the piping and stuff and, and, and people who had older homes or mobile homes or things like that, they had different problems in terms of uh, the chemical getting out of the system versus someone like the governor um on um, tomblin who where they were at like it's very flat it's newer upgrade like it's just so many differences that people don't think about and 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 because that's not one because when you're when, you know when you're poor when you're when you're working class you're thinking about the day-to-day -day, in and out you're just trying to make it so all these other extraneous things are just like okay whatever but they it's important, and if people had the time or the understanding on how to engage, okay, I have this extra hour this week, what could I do? What meeting can I go to? I mean, we have to get out there and help inform our, you know, our peers, our community members and stuff about yeah. how these issues actually matter and how they interact in our daily lives. Yeah. Um, what you're saying is, is so true. And I, I think it's like, what are we waiting on? Let me, I'm gonna use myself as an, an example, right? What better example to use than me? make this about me somehow all right but no for real everything that we built so far um and that we, we're building now but i built first by myself mm -hmm. has been volunteer volunteerism like i haven't made enough money off of youtube videos to pay a to pay a car note yet well maybe a car note right but not to buy a car right we're not out here you know we're this level of commitment that we're giving is not based on glamour and financial success it's based on our commitment to what we believe in and and I, i'm not saying this to dismiss uh people's motivations i don't think that everyone is waiting for money and i don't think that everyone is waiting for fame but i think that there is a a a level of commitment that goes above and beyond when you're doing something for free and mm -hmm. and and I think that's what people have to understand. It's going to start as anything that you're going to do is going is not going to replace your day job. You know, you're not going to you you can't wait until your day job. You're making enough money to not have to do your day job to start your own revolution. It doesn't work like that. You have to start your own revolution at night while you're working at the, in day and you get 
to the point where you don't know if you can physically do it anymore. You know, that's what I'm doing now. Th that's what I've convinced the Noah to do now. <laughs> that's what, and you were doing it with, with the Bernie, with, uh, with the African Americans for Bernie, you were doing it in some form or fashion before you even met me. And now, now I'm dragging, I'm dragging you onto the third thing and I'm dragging other people along with me because you know, you guys see my level of commitment and, and you feel like it's something that you can attach yourself to. But the model is this, the model is, you got to work your job in the daytime mm -hmm. and work your revolution at night. Your job is going, if you want to know how you're going to work capitalism to overthrow uh, the neoliberal iteration of capitalism is to take your money from the day job and invest it in your revolution at night. That's, that's the only way it's going to work. And, and this guy, Richard, you can see he's like, he, he should be retired sitting under a tree somewhere, sipping some, 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 some iced tea or uh, sipping on a cognac, just chilling. But even beyond his careers that he's already completed, he's committed to his own type of revolution. Yes. Mm -hmm. And so I'm putting a call out to everyone who's watching this. What is your revolution beyond, beyond Bernie Sanders, beyond this particular election? It does not end when Bernie Sanders gets elected. It doesn't, it's just beginning. What is your revolution that you're going to do and you're going to commit to that you're going to work once you get off of your real work? Mm -hmm. Or actually, let me let me reverse that. I'm going to do the, the <laughs> you know, you, your real work is your revolution. That thing that yeah. you do in the daytime is just a money source. Um, let me take yeah. this caller and um and 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 see what they talk about. <laughs> what you call her, what, what you won't call? No, for real. What's your name? Comment.